Okay, entire radicals and mixed radicals. So it starts off with square roots and cube roots and other roots. Okay, so square root. All positive numbers have two square roots. One was positive and the other is negative. The positive square root is called the principal square root and is denoted by this symbol here. So this symbol literally means positive root. Okay? Thank you, dear. Let's put it in that little box. <coughs> so just jot that down, please. It's the positive root only. Okay? So they are working with 16. So if, you're, if your problem says this, x squared equals 16, you have two answers. What are the two answers? Plus or minus square root 16, which equals plus and minus 4. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Since 4 and 4 makes 16 and negative 4 and negative 4 makes 16. Okay, so there's two answers to this equation here, x squared equals 16. There's two answers to that. And that's going to be true for all square roots. So you need to get into the habit of putting plus or minus before your root sign. Okay, this is going to be an important detail for this course. However, if the question is just written like this, you only have to put the positive. And this is just a little math detail that it's worth noting. That's all it is, just a little detail. So if it starts off trying to solve a square, then you have two answers. But if it's just giving you the positive sign, then it's just a positive answer. Any questions on that before we move on? No? Okay, so square roots, square roots will have similar properties as all even powers. Okay, so if the power is 4, if the power is 6, if the power is 8, you'll have similar results as this stuff in purple. And what happens for the cube roots will be similar to odd powers as well. So cube roots are similar, have similar behaviors as odd powers. Now, for the odd powers, 3 and 5 and 7 and so on, you're allowed to take the square or the cube roots or the fifth roots or the seventh roots of negatives. Whereas for the even powers, 2, 4, 6, and 8, you can't do that. Okay? So make a note of this. The square roots of um, negatives. Does I even say it in there? No. So let's just put that in there. You cannot square root what is that square root negatives and the reason for that is obvious right how could the answer be negative because a negative times a negative is always positive so you cannot square root negatives but you are allowed to do that for the odd powers, which are like the cube roots, 3, 5, and 7. Okay, So here's an example of a cube root of 1,000, 10 times 10 times 10, and a cube root of negative 27, which is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So I'll show you that one. So right beside it, you can put since negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 equals negative 27. Because if you just do two of them at a time, a negative times a negative will come out positive, and then you still have to do a positive times a negative here, which will make your final answer negative. Okay, so that will always happen for odd powers. Got to know this stuff. It's like some number basics. Okay. Now, the other thing with these irrationals. So you can put a box around these. Okay, any non-perfect root. Non-perfect roots spit out rationals. Okay. Non-perfect roots spit out irrationals. Okay. 
So maybe we could draw a number line in there. Okay, square root 4. What's the answer to square root 4? 2. What's the answer to square root 9? 3. So what, where would square root 5 be? And square root 6, and square root 7, and square root 8. They're just going to live somewhere between 2 and 3. Does that make sense? And square root 5, I don't know, 2 point some decimal that just goes on randomly forever. Root 6, 2 point some decimal that goes on randomly forever. Now in mathematics, we don't like that. We don't like those decimals that go on forever because then you have to approximate. So can someone just give me root 5? Type that into their calculator. Square root 5, what is that? 2.23 blah blah blah, right? So somewhere, somewhere here in this decimal you need to round because we're human beings and we can't infinitely write out a decimal. So this is called approx approximations. And in math, we don't like that. We want the exact value. So this root 5, they call exact, because you know exactly that it's root 5. Whereas 2.236, you know, and you stop it somewhere, that's rounding, so that's an approximate value, okay? So in 20-1, we are interested in exact values, okay? That's what we're interested in. So you want to leave it as a radical. You don't want to go to the decimal. That's a bad, bad, bad. Okay, you want to leave it in the radical sign, and we're going to learn. Excuse me, we're going to learn some tricks, some algebra to do that today. Okay, so other roots. Um, this just extends to the fourth root, is similar to the square root, and the fifth root is similar to the cube root. Similar, right? But not the only difference is the index. So what's the fourth root of 16? 2 and negative 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. What was the index in the power? It's a fourth root. So you can see here, fourth, fourth power, fourth index. You write out the 2 four times. Okay. This would also work for negative 2. It's also positive 16. What happens in the negatives? If you do a negative times a negative like that, it's going to come out positive. And if you do that pair, it's going to come out positive. So you basically have a positive times a positive. That stuff in yellow becomes positive. That stuff in purple becomes positive. And then you have positive times positive, which is obviously positive. Okay. So I'm just going to use my pointer. Finish writing whatever you need to write and then watch. The fourth roots of 16 are 2 and minus 2 because you can have two answers. However, the answer to this problem here is just what? 2. Because this symbol wants the positive only. Just that symbol, that radical thing looking s symbol, that tells you the positive only. Now the fifth root of negative 32 is going to be negative 2. So why is it negative 2? Because if you were to write this all out, you would get negative 32. So do two at a time. A negative times a negative is positive. And you still have three negatives left, right? Now do it one more time. Positive times a negative will give you a negative. Now you have three negatives. A negative times a negative will give you a positive. And then the last step is a positive times a negative, which is negative. Okay, so that will always happen. For odd powers, you'll get negatives. For even powers, it'll come out positive. And it just has to do with counting odds and evens.
and negatives and positives. Okay? And w powers of 2 are usual suspects. So get to know these numbers. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. See, look, 64. Uh, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 5096. I usually stop there. Get to know these numbers. These are usual suspect powers of 2. All right, so let's take a look at some of these. Square root 64, positive only. This answer is? Good. We're not using calculator. Square root of negative 64. <gasps> <gasps> Not a real number. It's non real. You can write non real. Remember? Because if it was negative 8, like some of you suggested, what's negative 8 times negative 8? Positive 64. We cannot do even roots of negatives. But odd roots, that's okay. So what number times itself three times is 64? N negative. Negative 4. Good. 4 times 4 times 4. How about 1 over 32? Yeah, I can you do 2? I mean, can you just do 32? We did it above, right? What's the fifth root of 32? 2. So what's the fifth root of 1 over 32? Okay, what you can do here is do like the fifth root of 1 and then the fifth root of 32 like this. So the fifth root of 1, any root of 1 is always going to be 1. 1 times 1 times 1 forever, like 1 times 1. And in the bottom, fifth root of 32, we've seen it above. It's 2, so 1 half there. Okay, E. Can we do E? Or same problem? Same problem for E. And F. All F has is an extra factor out front. Okay? This is just a factor. Deep inside the symbols there is just a times right there. It's just times. Okay? In bed mass, what do you do first? Brackets, exponents division and multiplication and then addition and subtraction. So exponents, this is an exponent. If you recall from Math 10C, there was a conversion between a fractional power and a radical. So radicals are exponents. We need to do that first. The cube root of 125 is, not using a calculator, 5. So we have 10 times 5, which is 50. Okay, do your exponents first, and then you can do this multiplication second. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, students in the class who have uh, troubles with times tables, uh, troubles with squares, troubles with cubes, you have to understand that that's who you are, and you either A, get really, really good at your calculator, or B, you learn it now. So you have options. This, uh, this list of squares and cubes can be easily generated on your Texas Instruments calculator. Okay? So I'll show you that right now. And this is, for, this is for all of us, but especially those of us who are struggling with times tables and squares and cubes. So it's very quick. You know, at the start of the exam, you could, you could put these on your calculator because you won't have that sheet. So go into your y equals, just clear this stuff and in y1 you can put x squared and in y2 you can put x cubed. And in fact you could do this for any power. So we have y1 will be your squares and y2 will be your cubes. All you need to do is hit second graph into your table and oh my gosh, my table's way up at 80, so I can either hit this up button 80 times, or I can go table set, which is second function window, start my table at zero, and go back into there. Here are my squares and cubes. 
So there they are. Okay, that is for your your help. It's a tool to help. All right, back to the lesson here. Let's go to the next page. Um, the graphing calculator, some more. Okay, so I'll show you the graphing calculator some more. So how to do a random root. So let's say I had the fifth root of 32, which we know to be 2. You're going to have to hit the index, which is 5. So we're doing a fifth root. You have to hit 5. And then you hit math. And it's this option with the x in the index on a radical. And it's option 5. Okay, so you can click 5 or you can scroll down there to get it. Hit enter. And on this calculator, it leaves it like this. So you can type in your 32 and you'll get 2. On the nicer calculators, it'll actually prompt this 5 up into the index. And it looks nicer. But there you go. That's any, any radical, any power, any index. Okay, back to the lesson. Use your calculator to determine the exact value. So I'll leave this one for you guys. Um, just a little note. Put brackets in here. Okay. And exact value. Maybe I should just do these with you guys. So no, that means no decimal. No decimal approximations. So exact value is important, sir. So for this unit, are we rounding up or rounding down, or is it just not rounding? Uh, we there shouldn't be much rounding. I don't know. Maybe when we get there, we'll see it, and I'll talk about it. Kay. Right now, I just too general of a question. Okay, so do the fifth through to 243. Hit the five. 243. Okay, the answer is three. What's the next one? Seventh root? Seventh root of what? 16384. Okay, that one's negative four. And then the last one was a cube root. Yeah, and the cube root actually has an option, so you can just click that one. You don't have to do the, or you have to hit three first. So there's actually a cube root button. And it was a fraction 125. Divided by 216. So I'll put a bracket around my fraction. Notice this. I don't want that. So math, fraction, enter. You get 5 over 6. Okay, <sighs> so we had 3 here. Uh, what was this one? Negative 4. And then this one is like if you split up the radical on the top and the bottom, you have the cube root of 125, which is 5, and the cube root of 216, which is 6. And of course, we did that on the calculator as well. So this one, to the nearest hundredth, this is going to be approximation, and that's okay because they've asked for an approximation. Okay. So note the difference between exact value and approximations. Please note that difference. Please remember it. And in the bottom, you have sort of a summary of what a radical is. So the radical is everything. And then you have some more detailed information, like what is the little number? Well, we call that an index. Here's the symbol. And then the thing inside is called a radicand. So that's a tough one to remember. So stop note at the bottom. When the index is not written, it's a 2. And that bottom note, you should know that one. For these class example 3s, in the calculator, I would go bracket 2 fraction, or like division, 5 bracket. And then I would hit 4, that little x thing, and then 100. You can do all that in one step. A and B are pretty self-explanatory. The other option for C is if you just do the fourth root of 100 and then multiply by 2, divide by 5. That's the other option for C.
I think it's time to get into some actual math. This is all like preamble. Stuff that for the most part is a review. Okay, this is crucial. Very, very crucial. You're allowed to smush radicals together. Smush them together if it's timesing and dividing, but not if it's plusing and minusing. So you got some good. And you got bad. Do not do not do this stuff here. This is bad. Okay. So put a star next to this in general. So when you multiply radicals, you can smush them. When you divide radicals, you can smush them. You know what I mean by smush them? <laughs> Slap them together. Put them together. It's okay. Okay? So let's look at class example four. Did they smush A together and is it okay? Because it would be like this, right? Three times five is 15 on the inside. So that one's good because it's timesing. That's okay. Put a check. True. This is true. What about B? What's 30 divided by 10? That's all they did. They smushed it together. One sign smushed the operation. So you're dividing. Well, let's just divide first and then take the radical of all that. So that one's good. That one's true. Now this last one is bad. Okay. There's like these invisible brackets here. You got to take care of um, those invisible brackets. This should be root 25, and then the, the positive square root of 25 is 5. Okay. What's the square root of 16? And what's the square root of 9? You put those together, you get 7, right? 5 is not 7, so this is wrong. This is false. So because it's addition, you cannot smush. Okay? It's on the right, separated. On the left, smushed. S just put together like a sandwich. Okay, entire and mixed. This is a review of Math 10. Okay, use a calculator to approximate the value of each radical to five decimal places. They should always, they should, all these are probably going to be the same. I'll do these quick for you. I'll explain. So I got 9.8, five decimal places, eh? I'll just do one decimal place, 9.8. And if you look on your calculator, they're all the same. 7, 9, 7, 9, 5, 8, 9, 7, 1. Okay, so they must all be equivalent. What do you notice about these answers? All the same. They all are equivalent. So that means this and this and this. They're all equal. They just look different. That's what math is all about sometimes. Okay, these two things are equal, but they look different. Okay, so why? Complete the following. So 96, apparently 4 is a factor, apparently. And 4 times 24 should be 96. So what they're going to do is they're going to not smush them, but break it apart. So break it apart. Put the 4 there. Put the 24 there. And square root 4 is a perfect square. It is 2, right? 2 goes there. And square root 24 is not perfect. So you just rewrite it. Usually you put the uh, whole number out on the left. Also, apparently, 96 has a factor of 6. And when you divide by 6, you get 16. But if you look above, I put an arrow on 4. Here I put an arrow on 6. This is where your number sense has to come into play. I think it would make more sense to put the factor 16, put an arrow on that. So apparently 96 divides by 16. Why is 16 special? It's a square. Right on that chart. So we're going to break this Break this statement apart, and then what does square root 16 become? 4. And this square root 6 is not perfect, so you just leave it. And these are examples 
of what are called mixed. Why is it called mixed? Because there's a whole number out in front and a radical next to it. Over on the left here, these are called entire. And in this course, for the most part, the goal is that you can take the entire and make it mixed. So you can simplify a larger expression later. Next page. Okay, so there's a couple methods m that might have been taught to you in grade 10. Um, one of them is more efficient than the other. One of them has to do with prime numbers. This one is usually just the, the go-to method. So please highlight this. This is, this is the best way to do it, I think. You need to find the highest perfect square. So, but in general, like if the index you know, if the n index was 3, would you find the highest square? No, you'd find the highest cube, right? You would switch this square to cube if you had to do an index of 3, right? What if the index was 4? Then you'd have to find the highest, not cube, but highest fourth power. So you're looking to factor the number, okay? So SEVI 2, what divides SEVI 2? 8 divides 72, but do I care about 8? Eight? 8's not what? Perfect square. So as a fail-safe, you can just start doing this, if, especially if your number sense is weak, divide by 4. Do you get a whole number? 18. So this one will work. Maybe there's a better one. Try 9 you get, oops, I should say 72. 72 divided by 9 is 8. That one will work. Is there a better one? 72, try 16. Or do you get a decimal for this one? Decimal, so not that one. What's the next one on my list? 25. I don't think 25 is going to hit that one. Next one is 36. And I get 2. So this is the one I want to go with. This is a fail-safe method. Start at the lowest square and work your way up until you no longer have any options. That's a fail-safe, okay? So I know that 72 is the same as 36 times 2. Those are the factors. That is one set of factors for 72. The 36 is a perfect square, so we'll split this expression into the two parts, one with radical 36, the other one radical 2, and the 36 is perfect, it comes out to a 6. And then we just write it like this, 6 root 2. Be very careful with your notation, right? Don't write uh, really small, because I might think it's an index, you know, make sure it's very clear. So, Here's an option, or here's an example with cubes. So now I'm not going to be dividing by squares. Like up here I divided by squares. Now we'll divide by cubes. And like right now, my brain's kind of feeling like mush. I'm just going to use my chart. I don't need to divide by 1. That one's obvious, so I'll try 8. That's the first one on the cubes list. What do I get here? Somebody help. 13.5? So 8 won't work. Decimal involved. Next cube on the list is 27. Try this one. 4? Okay, and then look at this answer, 4. Is there any factors left inside of 4 that might be cubes? So we can stop there. We know it's going to be 27. So the first step is 108 equals 27 times 4. That's something we know. It's the factors. 27 times 4 is 108. Then we split. So you can even put that word there if you want. Split. 27 goes first, 4 goes next. And then you simplify the perfect one. So 20, the cube root of 27 is 
3 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. How do we write this properly? 3, normal sized, little 3, and then 4, normal size. Please be diligent with your printing, especially on the written response. Write your indexes in, write them small. Make sure you know the difference between a coefficient, an index, and a radicand. All right, we got some problems here. These look challenging. Quite challenging. 320. You know, if I was doing this by uh, hand and I didn't have a calculator, I'd probably start with 4. And I'm just going to play around with this number to see, to show you that you can literally just play with these things. So I know it's going to divide by 4, because 32 divides 4. So if I divide that by 4, I know from my times tables that it'll be 4 times 80. Is the 4 perfect? 4 can come out as a 2. So now I'm at 2 root 80. I need to keep going. And now I'm working with 80. Is there a 4 that divides 80? I know 4 divides 8. So I'll change 80 to 4 times 20. This 4, how does it come out? You already have a 2 out there. So this 4 comes out, becomes a 2, and will multiply onto this 2. And now you have a 4 here. Did everybody catch that? 80 is 4 times 20. 4 is perfect, perfect square. It comes out as a 2. Now you have a 2 times 2 on the left, which is 4. Now what's up in 20? Can you take 4 out again? So let's rewrite 20 as 4 times 5. The 4 is perfect. It will come out as a... 4 comes out as a... 2, because square root 4 is 2. There's already a 4 out there. So 2 times 4 gives 8. And the only thing that's left is a 5. Now let's look back at my work. And let's highlight the factors that we used. We used 4, 4 again, and then 4 again. One second, please. What's 4 times 4 times 4? Because we used that factor 3 times. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. I bet you could have used 64 right off the bat. 320 is 64 times 5. 64 is a perfect square. It comes out as a, an 8. Same thing as I got down here. Which one was faster? The one on the left. So the goal is always to find the largest perfect square. That divides. See, 64 is the largest. You can also do it piece by piece if you're willing to put in all the steps. Most people, though, on the, they choose the left. You have a question? Yeah, good. So the one thing I want to mention, though, is like, let's imagine you thought 16 was the highest number, right? 16 is halfway, you would have used 20. Always check the radicand. Maybe there's some more factors in there, right? So maybe your final answer is 4 root 20. Maybe you stopped there. And you're like, oh, I think this is the answer. So what you would have to do is check 20. Is there more factors inside 20 that are perfect squares? And the answer is yes, there is one more. So you'd have to keep this process going. It also demonstrates to you what happens when the radical comes outside. When it comes outside, you start to multiply on. Okay. Now let's do 6,000. Okay, I'm going to do 6,000 like I'm a student that has trouble with numbers. So I'm, that's how I'm going to model this question. Okay, so cube root 6,000. I'm a, I'm a wise 
an organized student. I take notes in class. I know how to find the cubes. Okay, so I got my cubes. I'm trying to divide by 6,000. So I'll start with 8. And then I'll do work on the 27. So start with 8. Oh, 8 will work. Maybe there's a better one. 27. No, that one didn't work. Check my chart again. What's after 27? 64. Let's check 64. Oh, that one didn't work. What's after 64 on the chart? 125. Ooh, that's a good one. So I'll, it's better than 8. So I'll, I'll ignore 8 for now and I'll just stick with 125. But we can also be pretty smart too. Like, let's look at 48. We just have to check the 48. Is there any cube that divides 48? Which one? 8. And you get 6. So we actually have to use this. 750, apparently. No, pardon me. Pardon me, 125 times 8. My bad. Okay, so a thousand is actually the best option on this list. You can just look at it, Chi Ming? Yeah, you can. I know, Chi Ming. You're I was pretending to be a student that had trouble with numbers. You are not that student, Chi Ming. So yeah, what Chi Ming brought up is that look at this number. I know a thousand is a perfect cube. It's on my list. So let's break six thousand into a thousand times six. I always put the perfect number first. And then at first, if you're just learning this or just trying to get better at it, you split and then you simplify. Some people get quite good at this and they skip this intermediate step. They go, okay, thousand comes out as a ten, it's ten cube root six. Do you guys remember elementary school? Remember the base 10 blocks? The 100? What did the 100 look like? A big flat square. Don't be a square. Right? 100 was a squ What was the cube? 1,000, right? Do you remember the cube was 1,000? The base 10 blocks? It was like the unit, the rod, the square, and then the cube? Yeah, so that's why a thousand's a cube, a hundred's not a cube, a hundred's a square. Anyways, okay, 486, fifth roots, I have no clue. But how, if you had no clue, what would you do? No, you have to break it down. So what are the first few powers of five? One times one times one times one? One. Two times two times two times two times two? We already knew that one from the first page. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. What's that one? What's 3 to the 5? 3 power 5, 243. So this number gets large quite quick, these numbers. So the next one will be too big. 4 to the 5 is 1,024. So we've got to stop there. It's we only have three options. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And it looks like 243 is about half there. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so the fifth root of 486 will be the same as 243 times 2. Okay? The 243 is perfect. I put that one first. 243 comes out as a... Well, we'll split it because we're just learning. Whoops, these are fifth roots. We're still learning, so we split it. And the fifth root of 243 is 3. Notice the size of the numbers I wrote. The coefficient is regular size, the index is not. I have the hardest time marking if I see small numbers, big numbers, random numbers. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Are cube roots of negatives okay, first of all? Yes. Okay, so this is doable. It's a cube, so the first few numbers are 1, and then 8, 
and then 27. 27 is too big. It won't go into 40, right? So it's got to be 8. If 8 works, that's the only option we have. Does 8 work? Okay. So how could we work with this negative inside? We have two options now. We can leave the negative inside or we can take the negative out. It's optional. Okay? So I'm going to take the negative out. 40 is the same as 8 times 5. And of course this one's negative 8. So we can split it into the cube root of negative 8 and the cube root of 5. So what are the answers to these? Well, 2 is just 2. You can just think of the 2. It's just being brought down the whole time. Then we split, right? We split. Now we can bring them down. The 5 is not perfect, so we just have to bring it down. Now the 8 is perfect. It comes out to a... What goes in this bracket? Negative 2. And now you want to combine for negative 4 cube root 5. Any questions so far? Lots going on with this. You got to know numbers. You got to know the structure of this mixed stuff. And eventually, once we get going a bit here, you got to be able to do this really quick. Really quick. How are we doing? Surviving Monday? No, it's tough, eh? All right, let's keep going. Application to Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, so these will have the same answer, A and B. I don't believe you guys are taught the distance formula, but it's just Pythagorean Theorem. So let's just work with Pythagorean Theorem. Um, how much over? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 over. And how much up? 1, 2, 3. Okay, so you got the slope there, 3 over 9. Um, but you basically you have the two legs on a right angle triangle. So how does the uh, Pythagorean Theorem work? You've got to take the two small sides and square them up, and then you square root, right? You guys know the Pythagorean Theorem since junior high. Easy breezy. Take the two short sides, square them, and add them. So you got 81 plus 9, which is root 90. Root 90, if this was like grade 8, you would put that in your calculator, and you would find the decimal expansion, right? But in Math 20-1, we wish to put this in simplest radical form so that you have an exact value for it. So what perfect squares divide 90? 9 will work. Boom. Is there, m is there better ones? Because what happens when you divide by 9? You get 10. Is there any perfect square in 10? That means you got it. Okay. So 90 will be 9 times 10. 9 comes out as a 3, so you got 3 root 10. 3 root 10 will have the same decimal as root 90. And this distance formula is the exact same. You would get the exact same stuff. And we don't use the distance formula. They used to. But it's just Pythagorean theorem, so no big deal. Now you got to go from the mix to the entire. I think this is just for exercise uh, purposes. Usually this is not a goal in your algebra. The, like 99% of the time, your goal is to go to the mixed. So this is just for exercise, pure exercise. Okay, so two. And then root three. So we're just trying to make it more radical. We don't want this mix anymore. We're going to just all radical. So we're working with a square root. So you have to imagine to yourself, what would 2 look like as a square? Okay, Because 2 and root 4 have the same value, we can interchange them. Like We can substitute them. Okay, And now we can smush the 4 and 3 together to get 12, root 12. 
So that's the entire radical for this mixed radical. Okay, but like 2 and 4, that's an easy one. So, like, how would you do that if it wasn't an easy one? Okay, well, let's just, I'll show you for on D. I'll show you D. So, like, 5, I got to do a fourth with 5. Like, I don't know what that number is. So, all you guys have to do, check it out for D here. You just write 5 to the 4 with a fourth root. And then you still have that fourth root 2 next to it. So I'll highlight it for you so you can see, but that 5 is just this. So what happened? Look at the symbols. A fourth root to the fourth power, that actually just cancels. So it's just 5. 5 is just fourth root of a power 4. They cancel. But now that you can see that they're both fourth roots. Since they're both fourth roots, What can you do to these numbers inside? Smush them. Smush them together. So it's just one large root, one large fourth root of 5 to the power 4 times 2. And what's 5 to the power 4? Someone in the calculator. 625 times 2? 2. OK. I'm trusting streaming. Okay, so I skipped the two with negatives. We'll go back to them. Let's look at E. Kyle, are you following along? You got a pencil going? Taking notes? Please? Okay, so for this number, four fifths, what should I do to it? Cube it, cube it, cube root it, cube root it. All right? times cube root 100. Now I can smush it. So what's in the top? 4 cubed times 100 divided by 5 cubed. And I'll just make this a little bit longer so you can see that it's all just one cube root. Cube it, cube root it. Cube it, cube root it. It's still going to be four fifths. But now that they all have the same like overarching symbol, you can smush it all together into one. This overarching cube root does it all. You can simplify the inside now. So four cubed, throw it in your calculator. Times 100 divided by five cubed. I have no idea what this is. What is it? I can check my key. So math, fr go to math fraction, you get? Good. Just math fraction, 256 over 5. Okay, I would put all this stuff on the inside only. I wouldn't do the radical sign. I would just do the inside only, get an answer, and then go math fraction. Okay, let's take care of these negatives. All right, I'm going to write down a mistake. Please don't write it. Is that a mistake? Okay, good. Don't write with that. Don't ever do that, please. You cannot take a square root of a negative. So what do you do? Well. This negative 5 is, if you think about it, negative 1, positive 5, root 6. That's a good way to think about negatives. It's just a negative 1 out front. So bring this down. It's just a negative. What's this going to look like? Square root 5 squared. And this one is square root 6. The negative stays on the outside, 
And we can smush together 5 squared and 6. 25 times 6, 150. Got this down at the back? Promise? From last year? That's not okay. You want, do you need a fresh book? You should have your pencil moving and your brain working. So, do you need a fresh book? Okay. Now, with C, because you have an odd power, you don't have to do what I did in B. You could put the negative inside if you want. Okay? You can also leave it on the outside. So this negative is like optional. Okay? I'll do it like you, c you can use it. So I'll put the negative on the inside. So we're going to cube negative 4, and then we're going to cube root negative 4. It undoes it. Cube root 6, we're not going to touch. We'll leave it the exact same. I'll zoom in so that's all you need to focus on. And now we can smush, right? Make one large cube root, and we have negative 4 cubed times 6. That's something I can pop right into my calculator. Negative 4, negative 4, negative 4 is 64 negative times 6, 384. Okay, and of course I'll write down that you can put the negative on the outside as well. It's the same. It's the same. Only one more goal, you guys, and then you'll have some time. For the odd index, yeah. Just not for the even index. Even index, keep it outside always. Odd index, it can interchange inside and outside. Okay, the last one, they want you to do this without a calculator. All you're going to do is order from greatest to least. So let's take a look at some of these. What would 3 root 6 look like as an entire? So in, if you didn't have a calculator, entire will help with ordering. But you'll always have a calculator, so this is almost moot. But it's good exercise. 3 would look like... 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9 times 6 is 54. Let's take a look at the next one. 6 would look like 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. 36 times 3 is 108. So right away, what do you know? Which one's bigger, 6 root 3 or 3 root 6? Yeah. It's easy to tell now that this is larger than this. 108 is larger than 54, so square root 108 will be larger than square root 54. Root 18, well, it's already an entire, so why mess with it? Next one, what would 2 look like? 2 squared square root times 7, so 4 times 7 is 28. And the last one, 7 would become... 49. 49 times 2 is 98. Order from largest to greatest by putting a 1 beside the largest. 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. Okay, that's your last class example. Okay, homeworks. Homework, homework, homework. I really like questions one and two. They make you think. And thinking is good. So we'll do one and two. And if you go and look at the key later and you're not sure why something's true or false, please come and ask me. So four and five, because if you're on my exam, and you had to order something, you could just use your calculator. So like, I really don't see a lot of value in 4 unless you want to exercise your brain. OK? 
Okay. Again, number three, without, without the calculator. Please try this. Give it an honest go. Think about some of these usual suspects, powers of two and three and five, especially. So I'm liking one to three. Uh, I think six is a must. You have to be good at that. 20-1 students have to be good at radicals. You have to be able to work with these very easily. Um, seven is nice because it's like an application problem solving geometry sort of thing. So we'll do six and seven. Cross out nine. Cross out eight. You can. You could do all these questions, Jiming. I just crossed out the ones that aren't as valuable as the others. Ten. Ten is similar to six. So you should be able to go back and forth. Ten and six. Again, you have some ordering. So if you, if you choose not to do the ordering questions, I'm not going to be upset. Um, and then on the next page, I wouldn't worry too much about twelve. The big ones are 6 and 10. Some more problem solving here. So if you want to challenge yourself, do 13 to 15. Well, not so much 13, but definitely 14 and 15 as a challenge. And if you're feeling like time is an issue, please at least do 6 and 10. Please, 6 and 10. Those are the ones I really need you to do. Yep. Yep.